I, I knew I, I knew I was gonna forget. Thank you, Nicole. No problem. Yeah, so let's start. Yeah, here, here's our little quick agenda for today, doing our training on the uh, pilot scope. We're gonna go step by step through the Swiss. Uh, it's gonna be uh, Robert, Jake, and myself going through the uh, training. Uh, we had a pretty good group for uh, for the highlight scope. It was us three. We had Bill. We had Alex, uh, and uh, not a part of this group, but uh, Farsad was also involved from the uh, virtual design team. A lot of good, a lot of good feedback. Uh, that was a uh, good, good amount of group. Small enough, but good enough to kind of put together some pretty good data. So that's kind of what we're going to run through. So just step by step through the switch. So. Uh, what I'd like to start with is just kind of showing everybody where the uh, the new Swiss is located. It was uploaded to the uh, standard procedures. It's under pre-construction. You guys are all seeing my screen now, right? On the okay. portal. Okay, cool. Uh, pre-construction and then right next to the uh, highlighted details is the highlighted scope Swiss. That's the one that we're gonna kind of run through. If ever you need to go to it and download it, that's, that's the spot. With that, I've got it open here. Let me make sure I zoom in a little bit and we're gonna go step by step through it. So uh, step one is to create a folder, if not already created, already created called Highlight Scope. And here's a folder structure, it's in pre-contract and this kind of creates a consistent spot. So what I'd like to show the group, what this means, if it, generally when you create a new bid, that folder's already gonna be there. But if you need to create a folder, I'll give a good example here. This is what that step is talking about. So if I'm going into say an old job that before this process started, I'll pick one here, a Alexander headquarters. I'm going to say the structure pre-contract and there's no highlighted scope. If I wanted to kind of do it on that job, the job I created, um, I would kind of go here. I'm gonna go through that. And create that folder. That's really what that step is saying. Now, if you are working out on a project where you're, you've already run the, the new bid and you created it, like this one I have here as an example, 1100 Rancho, it, the phone is already there. All you have to do is just kind of check. If it's not there, create it. If it's there, then that kind of covers you for step one. Uh, and uh, Robert, to kind of take uh, take it over from there on. Uh... Uh, yeah. Okay. So step two: if you're highlighting in Bluebeam, you're going to upload, if not already uploaded, your Walter Zimmel highlighted scope tool chest in Bluebeam. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do this. Frank, if you want to stop sharing for a sec. About yours. Um, once you upload it, you'll have it in there always. So this is really just the first time that you go to do this. You guys see in my blue beam here? Yes. Okay. So as you can see, I have, I've clicked on the tool chest over here on the left, this one right here. Um, I've got my recent tools, my tools, estimator tools, and then I have my highlighted details in here. I removed my highlighted scope so I can show you guys how to do this. You basically go into this tool chest drop down here. Um, I'm going to go down to manage tools and you're going to import. And we have this saved in our lane folder um, right now. So it's in lane highlighted scope and it's the only BTX Bluebeam file in here. So you'll double click on this. It's asking me to overwrite because I already had it in here. Just click yes and it pops in there. Um, that's the easiest way to do it if you have Bluebeam open. If you don't, if we found out that you, you could just go into that folder and double click on that ETX file at the bottom, and it'll just do what I just did automatically. Um, it's another quick way to, to get it in there. Um, but that's how you upload it in there. And once it's in here, it's always in your Bluebeam, and you can use it whenever you want. And Jake's going to kind of talk about how we created this uh, during archiving. Can I have a question about highlighted scope? Or really quick. Yeah. Um, how do you change the colors? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I can. Think, uh, Jake, Jake's about to cover that. Um, okay. 
right, Jake? Oh. Yeah, yeah, Jake so, was a kind of Jake was a creator of the of the uh, highlighted scope, so I think he's got he's got a pretty good on on how he how he came about it. So sorry, Jake, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Uh, and one of the things just to touch on, um, you saw Robert was able to just go grab that uh, tool chest. For anybody who's already done it, uh, you may want to do it again and overwrite the one that you have. I remade the legend in that tool chest, um, so that was the first thing I was going to touch on. The old one is over here on the right. Uh, it was just a little clunky. I overthought it a little bit when I first made it. So I've remade the legend. The new one looks like this and it uh, performs a little better. So um, I'm going to get this one out of the way, maybe. That was the problem with this uh, legend is that it's got a bunch of markups grouped together, double the amount that it needed to. So what I did with this legend is it's actually just a combination of markups that are grouped together. Um, so for example, if I wanted to make a new one, um, would make a text box. Call it a test condition. And then up here, this is how, how my bloom, uh, blue beam is laid out. My properties are up top. I think that's like the default. So um, a lot of you guys should have it the same way. But the different things you can do, uh, you can change the color of the outline. Right now, I don't have one, but I can make it black. Uh, you can change the color of the text all the way to the right. So we'll make that black. Um, and then you can change the fill color here as well. Um, so we'll pick a different color than we have. Um, and then also on the legend, I didn't want it to be 100%. Uh, so I wanted to make it a little bit more see-through. So you can do that up here with the uh, opacity thing. Um, and then basically what I did, just to kind of give you an example, for the conditions that I did on this one, um, I just did the same thing over and over and over again uh, to get all the different ones. And then you'd give it a name, um, whatever it might be. So you're just kind of laying out how it's going to look. And then this is kind of important if you want to make them all go into the document at once, you go group which basically just groups those markups together. And now they all move together. And if you change the size, they all grow and, and contract together, um, which is nice to have. So it's a good thing to touch on for the group. So this one that you'll all have in the Walters and Wolf highlighted scope toolbox, if you want to make changes to it, you can do that by ungrouping, um, which turns them all into their original markups. So then, you know, if you wanted this to be a different color, now you can go in and change that individual markup. Uh, and then when you're done, one of the things that I've run into is like uh, this one maybe has a really long scope description and I don't want it to go into two rows. So then I would grow everything to match uh, and then I'd regroup it. So there's lots of different things you can do. Um, and then once you, if you make something new that you want to, uh, let's just go group that back up. If you want to put this in your toolbox, you right click on it and you'd say add to tool chest and you tell it which one to go to. Um, so that's a little bit of the thought behind how this came to be and how you could create your own if you wanted to. Um, we'll see how fast Bluebeam wants to be for me today. One of the things that uh, doesn't relate to any of us, but I've thought about in the PM updates when I was still doing PMing stuff, I feel like there could be a nice toolbox here that said like one week look ahead markups because uh, they always mark up their one week look ahead the exact same. Um, they always do the same highlight and then the protocol is to do the blue circle and the date off to the side. So instead of redoing those markups for me every time, I would probably just make a toolbox that has those in them. So just an example of where that kind of tool can help you out. Um, so that, I think I'll give it back to Frank. He's going to teach you how to load in some style sets into OST, I believe, which is the next step. Yep. Thank you, Jake. 
So let me start by switching back to the Swiss. So we, we covered uh, step one, step two, um, and there's some really good videos there in the Swiss when you download it that kind of cover a lot of the stuff that Robert and uh, Jake talked about if you need to refresh with the, with the video. So step three, if for whatever reason you wanted to um, use the highlighting tools in uh, OST, I think the majority of us are kind of shifting towards Bluebeam, but there is a step here if you wanted to do it in, in uh, OST. So I've got OST. Um, you've opened OST, you've loaded all, all your, your drawing sets, and now you're ready, you want to do a highlight. So what that step is saying, if you wanted to load the preset condition styles that are in OST, uh, how to do that. So uh, how to do that is right click here in, in right below the groups, then you want to insert a style set. And a lot of you probably have already gone through the synchronizing of the database. So for starters, you want to be able to do that synchronization or you're not going to be able to get this option. So that's probably a whole different one. There, there is a video on how to synchronize your databases and all that. But in this step, you, you've already synchronized and all you really want to do is select it. So you right click it, this pops up and you click on a highlight scope if you're doing highlight scope and then you select. Once you select that gets inserted and it gives you those those three kind of like a similar uh, similar to the tool tool chest in uh, in Bluebeam. So if you are doing it here, this is how you insert in that step how you insert the condition styles. This kind of gives you like a, a palette similar to to that, and that that kind of covers that step. You know, roll it back to to Jake. Wait, let's go back to Sharon. And so the next step was specific to how to extract sheets um, so that they'll be named properly for OST. Um, and so what we want to do, I think a lot of you have seen the, the Swiss and are familiar with uh, the importance of creating your page labels and your bookmarks. So. I'm going to not touch on that, but it kind of making the assumption that that's already done. You want to make sure you have page labels and bookmarks, um, which should really already have happened. So uh, from there, you would go up to document for the document that you want to add the pages for. Um, this one, like if I'm going to take this to OST, I don't need the life safety. Um, I just really want these A sheets for this example. So I'm just going to click and, and find out which sheets I want, which is page 15 through, let's see, 15 through 50. So then I'd go to document, extract pages, um, and we would do that custom range. If you want the whole document, then you would just do all pages or, um, but I want to do just this custom range. So 15 through 50. And then this is where you want to change things a little bit than how you may normally do it. Instead of extracting um, as a separate document, you want them to all be separate pages uh, or pages per file kind of thing. So um, the way by checking that box, every page will be a different file. And then you want to use the page label to name the files. And you don't want to open files after extraction. Um, that would not be good if you're extracting 100 pages. It's going to try and open every one of them. So uh, we'll click OK on that. And we'll just put it to the job folder so I don't get confused with having this file somewhere else. So this one, you're just selecting the destination folder. You don't have to name it because it's already going to name all those pages the way you want. Uh, and I've already done this, so I'm going to overwrite them. And then what's going to happen when you go to that folder You're going to have all of these in here. You can see the page label was messed up on that one when I brought it in. So um, would have wanted to fix the page labels before I did that. But um, from there, when you go to OST, you'll import all of these files and it will name them 
uh, with this naming. So that would save you the trouble of having to rename each individual page, which can be a lot on the big set. So give it back. I think we're going to Frank. I believe. Yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be Robert's going to cover step yep. five. Yep. Yeah, something to point out uh, that we didn't talk about at the very beginning, but all these steps that we're going through from from step one through all the way to seven is all you're really doing right now is is prepping for 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 you know to do your highlight scope. These are all kind of the setups from step one through seven, right before you get to eight, you're, you're going to start right into it. So at five here, you're basically going to, you're going to verify if a legend exists for the job, um, because you're going to want to name your individual conditions, whatever they name them in the architectural set, just to avoid any confusion. Um, so that's, that's really what step five is, is looking to see if that exists. And then step six will be to insert your tool chest. Um, this one being uh, blue beam, and then the next step, if you were doing it in OST, um, and name your conditions based off what you see in the drawing. So this is the job that I used um, when we did our report out, and it doesn't have much of a legend. It was a pretty early set of drawings. You can see there's no legend of what's what besides this one kind of call out of what type of curtain wall is. So for this job, I would use this ACW1 to name my systems. Um, I would go to my tool chest. I would click on my legend, drop it on the page here. Um, and then with the way we have this set up, which I'll show you when I'm doing the highlighting, uh, you'll need to hit escape because you it keeps the tool active. Now when I correct it now, um, when I go back to my door. But we've got, so this first system description, I would name, ACW1, and then I would probably give it something like, I know because on this project, ACW1 was pretty much everywhere, but this was the punched window section of it. Um, and then we had another area where it was the same call out window type, um, but it was like a strip window. So this is where you would go through and you'd name it as close as possible to what the architecturals are showing. Uh, so a better example would be on this bound capital job we just did. Actually, this is not a good example. They didn't name them either. Um, I don't have a good example, but we will in a minute because I know Frank's got several in his um, where they actually named the system. But you would continue through here naming your conditions, whatever you have in here. So MP2 up here at the roof, um, and you could give it a name like whatever you want to call it for this name. You just want to stay as consistent as possible with what they're showing in in the drawings. Um, and then Frank, I think you've got this kind of same step in OST. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One look to that. Yeah. So Robert covered covered six if you did it in, in, in blue beam and doing it in uh, doing the scoping the uh, uh, highlight scope in OST let me flip to that um, this one does have a legend that we could use um, I'll use this as reference again if you were doing your highlighted scope in uh, OST we've already insert the uh, the conditions so you take your first condition you want to match it up you know, so that it's consistent with what the architectures are, are showing. So I'm going to take this first one here and I'm going to match it up with that first one. I'm going to call it uh, GWS 01, Oakdale Power. Let's see how my typing is today. Unitized third wall. System with angled glass. Now, I'm going I'm to leave the color the same. This is area. I'm going to say, okay. That's my first one. I'm going to use, I'm going to only do two for, the, for this purpose. I'm going to call the second one GWS02. Office power, window wall system. 
we'll keep it short. So those are those two. And if I went in and say, you know, start with my first one, here's my scope for just to have, just to see how image legend works on, on OST, a few would, if you already know. And if you had the tower, let's say this was your tower scope down here. And you want it to show up similar to the torches in the image legend in OST, you actually, most of the time you have to turn it on. So it's right, right here in, in my menu, it shows it right here. So I have to do is just click it on and it populates here. You do have to kind of toggle with the sizes sometimes, but make it a little bigger so we could see it. Essentially it gives you something similar, except on an OST is gonna be footage. Even though this, this is just highlighted scope, you, this is kind of similar to what you would do in OST. And then I'll pass it over back to Robert. I think you might be muted, Robert. Man, okay, yes. Okay, thanks, Nicole. So we're finally through step seven, um, and you can start highlighting. So this is gonna happen, it's intended to happen during your Gemba kickoff meeting. Um, so the Bluebeam version of this, we'll go back to the same job. Uh, you would have inserted your legend and named them appropriately, and then you're gonna go ahead and start highlighting those scope items. So the first quick tip, and the reason why I'd never used this before and always uh, used it in OST was because I didn't know about this feature, which Jake kindly pointed out and helped us develop this. If you go into preferences and tools, this reuse tools checkbox right here, you wanna make sure that's checked because if it's not, and when you go to highlight with one of these, so say I'm highlighting my punched windows, um, and I highlight one, it deselects my tool and I have to go over here and click on it again to highlight the next one. And every time you highlight something, your tool is no longer active. So you want to go into preferences, tools, and then check the reuse tools box so that you can just continually highlight over and over again. Um, same thing as we do in OST. Once you get a few going, if you have something consistent like this, you can copy and paste um, and so on to make it a little bit faster. But basically you'd be going through and highlighting uh, while referencing back to your colors here of what's what. So this would be kind of the strip window area here. And then you can also use these as a selection tool instead of just clicking and dragging a rectangle or a box. So my roof screen color here is blue. This one's kind of an odd shape here. If I wanted to draw a rectangle, I'd miss the bottom there. So you can click off um, the corners. You can hold shift to keep it in a straight line and click off where you'd like to click off here. And then once you get back to a spot where you can close your rectangle, um, with a straight line like I am right here. If I double click this, it will close the box um, in a straight line back to the first point. It's just a, another quick tip. But basically, you go through and, and do this for the project during your kickoff meeting so everybody gets on the same page. Um, it's a pretty quick way to highlight in Bluebeam. And it's really nice to have it in Bluebeam because you can extract this and it all looks really nice as opposed to an OST where you have to print to a PDF and you kind of get some bad printer marks when you print to PDF, but that's the gist of highlighting in, in Bluebeam. And Frank. Take it back. And we're here at the, just about the last step, you know, let, you, you went through, you did your highlights. And now you want to extract the, the, uh, the files kind of almost going back to, to step one. Or you're going to put it in the folder location. So I'm going to walk through that exporting the 
your highlighter scope. If most of us are going to be doing this in Bluebeam, that's kind of going to be this example. Um, so I've got here uh, four sheets of elevations that are active within within the Bluebeam session, which is kind of what we want to do, just so that everyone kind of collaborates and you're you're able to kind of have the whole team highlight. Um, this is an example of four sheets that were highlighted for NBC in the session. So now you want to be able to extract it and be able to kind of share that data with with your customer. So I'm just going to walk through that. I'm going to select the first page and then the last page. I'm holding shift while I do that. And I'm going to, similar to what uh, Jake was showing at the beginning of extracting pages. So I right click, I'm extract the pages. I'm not going to separate them. I'm going to keep them together. I'm not going to, I don't need to open it. I, I, all this gets left, gets left the way it is. I just want to give it a name. I'm going to say, okay. And then I'm going to go back to the original folder. Um, say this is NBC. So there, there should be a folder here for that project um, when it was created. A place for you to drop it in, highlighted scope. There's one in there here already, um, labeled highlighted scope. And I'm going to use that same naming, but I'm going to put it today's date, which would be 11, 11 2021. And this will go through the process and it'll be done. And since I selected for it not to be open, I would have to manually open that file. You go to the folder, the contract, I let it scope. And it's the one with today's date. You can open it maybe to take a, a quick peek at it before you send it out. And then this will be the document that you can share with the contractor. Uh, pretty similar to what's gonna be in the session, but at least it'll be a standalone four pages that they could come through and review with the, with what they, how they're seeing the scope. So that, that covers that step of, uh, that's all the steps, step 10, sending it out to the, to the contractor once it's all done. Any uh, questions for the group? Pretty uh, straightforward. So if we were doing this on a joint job um, with precast, um, it would just be a matter of, of logging into the Bluebeam session, Frank and and the yes. precast estimator following the the formatting. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we've actually been, been trying that. You kind of lay out, try to, that's kind of part of the, the uh, agenda for the uh, the Gemba, is you kind of walk through it and encourage kind of the team to kind of do it. You know, another reason why you want to do it in the session so that, you know, no one's just watching one person kind of color the whole thing and everyone kind of collaborates and, and takes the whole thing. Like, well, I, well, I would do, say the first page, you know, somebody could kind of jump on the second one and just to get like one system at a time. So it, it would help. It does help. No. Yeah, that no, makes a lot of sense. And <clears throat> there's nothing like uh, not having to email documents back and forth as it's work in progress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. I agree. Cool. I agree. Yeah. I have um, one question, Jake. Is Would it be possible to add maybe just like a couple more colors to the legend or? How hard is it to like duplicate them? So on one of my projects, there's like a little bit more than the preset colors. Um, yeah, um, if I could touch on it, if we want to go back, because I think that might happen, especially on the joint projects when we're trying to do precast and and glazing. But um, what I would do is ungroup and like copy and paste, and then just change the colors. Um, or you know, we can get a couple more preloaded in there. I was going to say, because then how do you make like the little, because you guys did all this, which I would have no idea how to do it, but how do you make like the preset? So like for yellow, like how would you make that little? You want to take that back here? I'll, I'll stop sharing. Yeah. I'll, uh, let's see. So like match the legend. Let's go. I think I was on the cover sheet. So I think for these conditions, I would duplicate 
And then this one, I'd pick a color. Um, what do we not have? I don't think we have this dark purple. So then that one's done, it's in there. Um, and then if I wanted to add it to the list, I would, I think I can leave that grouped. Actually, I don't wanna do that. I would ungroup this. I can just add more so that we don't have to do this, but just showing you how, if you needed to. Um, you could just copy and paste and then change the color. Like that one we just added was the dark purple. So then that would have added it, but I'll go through and add more. I think uh, was just running out of original colors when I tried the first time and I, we weren't really sure how many we needed, but it, if we're running out, we'll add uh, a couple more in there. And then, so now like for me, since I'm gonna make kind of the master one that we'll save back to that toolbox, um, I would group it. And then I believe if I go here to settings, save and export, I would go back to that lean folder and export it to there. So that's another kind of thing. If you make tool sets that you want to share, just export them. Uh, highlighted. So I'm going to overwrite that one. So it'll have the, the dark purple now. Um, but that's basically all I'm doing is just copying or duplicating these, changing the colors, and then doing a text box with a fill to match. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Cool. And uh, one other question. It kind of just reminded me, Frank, do you have a set set up like that? I, I mean, I guess you could actually use the same colors, but for like highlighted details where it's like a uh, yellow, red, and green. Uh, yeah, it's in there. Um, oh. here, let me let me share it's it. It's in the highlighted it. details uh, yeah, it, folder. Very, it was right next to highlighted scope. <laughs> okay, sounds good. I will get yeah, that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's there. If you double click it, just like uh, Robert kind of showed us, it's this one here. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And a similar, similar ledger. Yep. Any other questions from the group? No? Then I think uh, that's all our time. I know we're, we didn't have to use up all our one hour, but I think we covered quite a bit, just step by step. There'll be some, uh, I, I know we've get, been getting a lot of feedback. Uh, let me see if I can share one more thing before we go. The way we were doing the highlighted uh, detail PDCA started a list of items, a lot of feedback, like the colors and stuff to come in. Um, you know, naming structures, th this will be stuff that we're gonna kind of evolve as we kind of keep going a part of the PDCA for, for this specific Swiss, you know, adding more colors, uh, just making it, you know, once everybody starts using it, there'll be a lot, I'm sure there'll be a lot more stuff to, to incorporate when the PDCA kind of comes back around. So. That's it. Nice there job, no guys. Thank you guys. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for- Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. See you later. See you guys. Thank you.